Hello and welcome to a Nexus Splits video about how to lane this gameplay and play in Z. It's a very strong mid lane champion, a very good gameplay, this one. Um, hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to be talking about um, specifically the two lanes in this video, so the mid lane and the bot lane, and then I'll do another video another time about how to jungle. So for the basics of the Nexus Splits laning, the mid lane is a 1v1 and the bot lane is a 2v2. So each game you want to make sure that you're doing that lane assignment because the bot lane is just much easier to play 2v2 um, and the mid lane is really easy to play 1v1 and it gives you lots of opportunities to roam or get solo kills. So for mid lane, it's very good to play uh, self-reliant champions such as the Zed like I'm playing here. They have the Vayne who's also fine, probably not that great into Zed, but the bot lane is where the supports would be. For example, so like you could have very similar similar to Summoner's Rift, a mid, an AD carry and support in bot lane, that'll work just fine. Mid lane is the higher of the chance to carry each game, so I'd recommend that if you're trying to win lots of games and get fed. Much much easier to get fed off mid lane is you have more chance to roam towards jungle or to bot lane. Um, the most important thing when you're choosing a champion to play in the lanes is that they have a very strong level three. So or even at a strong level 2. So for example, Zed, once he gets level 3, he's got his basically full early game kits unlocked. He's got a Shadow, his Shuriken, and his uh, Spin, Blade Spin, whatever it's called. So he, you're able to roam really easily with your mobility, and you have very good damage. You can easily get your Electrocute off, which is what you saw I did just there. As soon as you get level 3, you can go bot lane. You can even do it at level 2, which is why sometimes it's good to push the wave as fast as you can. Then you can go straight down into bot lane. If the bot lane have overextended, you'll often see them. Say, we're on blue team. If the enemy team pushes up and gets over here, even if your wave is still around here, you can just walk straight through the bush. No one will have vision of this area. Go down, get an easy roam, get an early kill, and that can start your snowball. You can base and get items just like I did here. So in terms of the best champions for mid lane, definitely Assassins are super good here, especially I think Zed is probably one of the best champions in this mode just because of how self-reliant he is, self-sustainable. Um, he can get solo kills in mid lane, he can roam early, he can go bot lane and kill supports, kill AD carries easily, he can even take on junglers at pretty much any point because as mid lane you're going to be the one with the most XP. So you're going to get level 6 first, and Zed has a very strong level 6. That's another important thing, to make sure that you're playing champions who do have these strong level 6 power spikes. So champions like Zed, Akali on the other team is another good example. Um, once you get Since you are mid lane, you'll get level 6 first. You have a very strong ultimate. It's very good for the first um, first event. Um, so you want to be trying to save your ults for that event, but if you get it early and get kills, then it's also just as good there. For example, in prize fights, you do get an ultimate cooldown reduction, so it doesn't matter too much if you use it beforehand. You can see that my ultimate's currently down, but by the time we get into the prize fight, it'll be back up, especially if you're last. Um, you get even more time for it to come back and cool down. But I think it all, you also get a free reset. Um, I believe... At least in all of the games that I played, it has been junglers versus junglers, and then the bot laners. Maybe not junglers versus junglers, but it's it's normally the mid laners who have to fight against each other, so potentially it's the two highest levels that end up fighting each other. At least that's what it seemed to be to me. Or something to do with assassins, as I have been playing mostly assassins. Um, some, some more quick... Uh, mid lane related things before we talk about the events. Um, actually, I'll talk about the events quickly now, and then we can go back to the the other things. So you can see the event that's going to be first while you're in champ select. So I'd heavily advise if you want to do well, you pick champions for that event, as the first event has the biggest effect out of any of the events. If you win this event, you're very likely to get a good buff and be able to win the game off of it. Quick side note, this is a very nice 1v1. So for this this mode, I saw it as the prize fight, which means 2v2, 2v2 and a 1v1. And for this mode, you want to be picking champions that are self-reliant and that can take 1v1s easily. So Zed is a perfect example of this. Oh, I actually lost this one. I was thinking of a different one. Um, but 
Zed and Akali, both assassins, both very good. So you can imagine that they're quite even in this in this matchup. Whereas, for example, if the Janna ended up in a 1v1 versus the Akali, the Janna would have no chance. Alternatively to this, there are other game modes where you can pick other things. I'll talk about them in a second. I'll just quickly go back to some mid lane stuff. So vision is also another very important thing. The scuttle crab is super difficult to kill, so hardly anyone ever is able to get it without having your full team there to, to grab it. So warding around this area is very important. This is one of my wards I put on earlier just to keep vision of this whole area. This bush had another ward in. Early game you want to be warding around this area if you're on blue side and around this area from red side. These two bushes are also important to ward to spot the junglers. So for example, if the junglers are up top, then they'll be ganking through this lane, through this path right here, into mid lane. So if you have vision up here, you'll be able to stop it. And then they won't be able to go around back so easily, as your golem should be able to spot them. So another further tip is when you're spawning, you can run straight from here to this cannon. You just right click on it and it immediately shoots you straight down here. You don't have to choose where you want to be shot to. This is very good. I think it's faster than running like 100% of the time. And also if there's an event about to start, you want to get down here. It's the best way to get down here. One other cannon that people don't seem to know about is down on this part of the map. This can be really good for escapes. If you're getting chased through this river, you can cannon and that takes you up to the top side. Or if you just need to rotate, then this cannon's really good. There's one on either side of both of them. So yeah, you can use those. So let's go back to events. Um, as I mentioned, you see the first one in the champ select, so you should pick for those events. So let's go through a few of the other events to tell you which champions you should be picking for each of them. So for the earth mode, which I'll have a picture of the earth whale guy, manatee, whatever he is, um, you want to be picking champions that would be good enough. So I believe that there are some win, win rate lists out there, but champions like Sona um, always have very good win rates in earth. So have her, will be very good in this mode, as you'll be able to be constantly spamming your abilities. There's another mode, which is the loot Teemo or Viga. In this mode, you don't actually want to be, care so much about the objective, and that's a common thing, a common mistake I see people making is that they focus too much on hitting the Teemo or the Viga, whereas what they really should be doing is taking the fight, winning the fight while the enemy is focused on it. And then after that, you get the free objective. So once you've killed the enemies, they won't be able to be doing any more damage to Teemo. So you can get all of the free goals from it and then finish off the objective. This is the same for the DPS check event where you want to be doing damage to the target dummy. That's the goal. The team who does the most damage to the target dummy wins. Um, but the best way to win that is by killing the enemies first. So then you get free reign on the target dummy. Great champions for the Teemo and Viga are ones with either CC or have great mobility and can get catches and kill people while the event's happening, while everyone's focused on killing the Teemo. So champions like um, Zed or Pantheon or Talon, who have high mobility, can one-shot someone, get them out of the fight, and then you can focus on the Teemo after that. For the DPS check, they're actually very good champions. Who have single target damage, such as Nunu, he's probably the best for that mode, as he can just feast the feast the dummy and get loads of damage onto it. Cassiopeia and Azir are also very good, as would be any champion that is good at um, dealing damage to objectives in Summoner's Rift. So any champion that does Baron quickly will be very good at these modes. So even a Vayne with a Rage Blade could be very good at dealing damage. Other modes are quite similar. Um, push the cart is another mode where you have to where each team has a cart that they need to push to the enemy's objective. In this mode, you don't necessarily want to send all of your team to your cart to try and push it, as the enemy's cart will be pushed just as fast. And if you have a lead, the enemies won't have to push their cart as far. So, for example, in this game, the we would have to push the cart all the way to this tower as we've already taken their first towers, but the enemies would only have to get their cart to one of our first towers which gives them an advantage in that mode as a way to come back. So my tips for that mode is to send one or two people to your push, 
maybe even only one just to keep it far up and then as the mid laner you should be as the mid laner or bot laner you should be going to the enemy's objective to make sure that they can't even push it off the starting point just by standing in the circle you can test it and stop it from pushing so that's the best way to contest them just staying inside the circle you don't have to take the fight you can just keep running in and out of it they're gonna have to walk towards you to push it and the final event is the Soraka game mode where each team has a Soraka they need to protect. The Soraka has items she can use to heal you, she has her ultimate, she has her heals. So the best way to play with your team Soraka is to group up as 5v5. As, and then as a mid laner or bot laner, you want to be the one who goes in, gets some damage off and goes out again. So champions who can dive are very good here and also so are tanks as they can go in and get, then they go in, they take loads of damage, they come out, they get healed by Soraka back to full life, as she has a massive HP pool, and also her abilities and items. And then you're able to go back into the fight once again. Lots of people take a fight and then all in, and then die, and the Soraka's not able to help them. So you need to, the most important thing to look out for during those is where, where your Soraka is, and make sure you're staying next to her even if you're trying to get damage off. You don't want to fully commit ever if you got this wrecker on your team. Even on dive champions, it's still better to back up a bit. Another good tip for winning with mid and bot laners is the Rift Herald. As you can see in this game, 10 minutes in, we've got this Rift Herald. Now we're able to break their inhibitor, which is the best use of the, best use of the Rift Herald. If you get the inhibitor with the Rift Herald, it's going to be very hard for the enemies to come back as double super minions are coming into their base constantly. You'll have the Baron buff. There's very little they can do. As laners, just some tips about items. You don't want to be going for the spatula just because it's way too expensive. You want to be going for smaller, cheaper items. So in this game, in this game I went, uh, I was a Zed, going for lethality, very cheap items. I'm already on three, building my fourth by the end of the game. Whereas if I was on Spatula, I'd be probably only getting it around now, so my effectiveness would only just be starting. So that's all for today. Um, as I said, I'll be making another video about how to play jungle, so subscribe if you'd like to see that, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.